right, it's 1040. I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you all for joining us this morning. As a reminder, your microphone and cameras are already turned off. Please keep them turned off during this session. If you have any questions, please put them into the chat and we will try to answer them if time permits. Additionally, a copy of all presentations and recordings of each session will be available on the Commission's website. The full Education Value Convening agenda and links to breakout sessions are available on the Commission website. I will include the link in the chat, and that's all for housekeeping. At this time, I want to introduce Lee, who will be presenting for the first time the high-level findings of Cheese Adult Student Report. Lee, take it away. Thank you, Cassandra. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, welcome to uh, this breakout session. Uh, my name is Lee Rathbun. I'm with the Commission for Higher Education, and I am the Assistant Director of Data Analytics. Uh, today, I will be presenting uh, a data preview of our upcoming uh, CHE Adult Learner Report. Uh, I want to first make clear the objectives of today's presentation. I will be presenting high level findings uh, from that upcoming adult learner report. So this will be a very data centric uh, presentation. If you're a person who likes numbers, this is definitely the uh, presentation uh, for you. And hopefully this will serve as a um, setting up the stage uh, for Stacey Townsley's presentation later on today. Uh, the main objective here is to observe the status of and the challenges facing Indiana adult learners, and we're going to do that through the lens of compare and contrast, particularly to traditional students, looking at not only the academic profile of adult learners, but also the demographic profile of adult learners. So our general outline for today is we're going to first go through uh, definitions, the definitions that we're working with in this adult learner report and explore some general characteristics that we've observed of adult, of adult learners. We'll look at the historic enrollment trends uh, for the previous 10 years, as well as the academic profile and demographic profile, and we'll conclude with some key takeaways. First, starting off with definitions of, and characteristics. Uh, our report definitions, we're operating uh, with an adult learner as anyone or any student that is 25 years of age or older. We break these age groups down into three categories, um, although there is times within the report that we get more granular, but the main three categories are 25 to 34, 35 to 49, and 50 and older. They are enrolled at Indiana public institutions at the undergraduate level. Uh, we understand that there are adult learners at private uh, as well as at the graduate level, uh, but here we are focused on Indiana public undergraduates. The timeline is for the previous 10 years, anywhere between fall 2012 and the spring 2021. I will clarify when we're uh, looking at just a particular year or a set of five years. Some general characteristics to think about just setting the stage and getting your minds thinking about what an adult learner uh, particularly is. It is generally somebody that has delayed entering post secondary education after high school. Um, and they typically have some career experience upon entering higher education. Uh, not always, but sometimes we do find that they have uh, dependents or other external familial uh, responsibilities, and this will definitely bear on their academic academic profile. And generally, they are financially independent for the purposes of financial aid when they fill out uh, the FAFSA or apply for any other financial aid. They're definitely operating under a different set of assumptions than a traditional student. Let's take a look at, at the adult enrollment trends. I'm just going to give you the high level number right off the top, and it is simply that uh, one out of every four undergraduate students is an adult learner. So when you're looking at your classrooms or counseling students, one out of every four learner that you're going to speak with is an adult learner. Uh, that means roughly 25.2% is our latest calculation, whereas 74.8% are traditional learners. What's even more striking is that 15.5% uh, that you see there that rests between 25 and 34. That simply means that one out of every students is between ages 25 and 34. 
Uh, when you break it down into just adult learners, uh, subsetting just the adult learners, we do find that 25 to 34 is the highest category. Roughly six out of 10 uh, adult learners is between 25 and 34. Looking at the historic enrollment trends, though, we can see that Indiana has seen uh, 10 straight years of decline among adult undergraduates. Uh, 10 years ago, greater than uh, or just around 35%, 35.9% of the student body was adult learners. Uh, today, adult learners make up roughly that one in four. Headcount head growth rates have also been uh, in the negative. We often don't publish head count, straight headcounts, but uh, overall the numbers have been in decline as well. So with that context in mind, uh, that one in four of every student is an adult learner, let's go ahead and look up what type of academic profile these adult learners are carrying with them through our institutions. Adult learners approach higher education in contrary ways uh, to traditional students, and I'll highlight just a few of those here. First, adult learners are more likely to be in a transitional period, either due to a job loss or career change. They might also be looking to further an existing credential, or they might be testing post-secondary education for the first time. Adult learners, unlike traditional students, are also more likely to be embedded in a community already. They've established careers and families locally. They are local Indiana Hoosiers, uh, our own neighbors, and they have external responsibilities, perhaps such as child or per older parental care. And another way in which they approach higher education differently is that they are financially independent and responsible for all associated expenses. So let's go ahead and break down each of these uh, little categories of the academic profile that you see along the left hand side. We're going to first take a look at the area of study. We see here and I've highlighted here that adult learners are far more likely to enter into a health or trade profession. These are fields uh, that can definitely build credentials quickly. Adult learners are more likely uh, to enter a health or trade 16 and 8 percentage points more respectively. They build credentials and often earn uh, credit for prior learning. Uh, these fields are most likely to be located at the associates or certificate level, so we'll see that correlation when we look at degree level choice. Uh, but I also wanted to highlight also that it, they are nine percentage points less likely to enter a STEM or business field. So health and trades, keeping that in mind that they are uh, areas of study that offer adults a shorter time, uh, time commitment and real workforce value. Let's look at that degree level choice. Adult learners historically ha have made up a majority of associates uh, seekers over the last five years. 59.4 uh, have sought an associates, and I've provided the, the donut charts over there to the right so that we can easily compare adult learners and traditional students by that degree level. You see that 59.4 for associates uh, for adult learners, contrasting that to traditional students uh, where traditional students typically make up about three, four, three fourths of them uh, opt for a bachelor's. We see that certificate level uh, only makes up around 6% of degree selections, but it is worth noting that among certificate earners, adult learners are the most likely category. Uh, they make up a clear majority of certificate seekers. So while certificates don't make up a small proportion, adults make up a high proportion of those certificates. And among adults uh, that are seeking a bachelor's, it is worth noting that the four-year regional campuses are a main hub for that. So looking at adult learners uh, by institution type, uh, going right hand in hand with that associate's level degree, uh, we see that a two-year campus is definitely the most favorable for adult learners, whereas traditional students may choose a, a four-year main or a four-year regional. Uh, just so you can compare the campuses um, side by side, uh, we can sort of see uh, where adult learners are choosing over the last five years. And I, I also do find it very interesting that the percentage choosing a two year campus is going upward, uh, signaling that adults really do have that trust and confidence in a two year associate's degree. 
not only the uh, degree level choice uh, makes a difference, but it is very un a very unique a characteristic of adult learners that they choose uh, to enroll part time. And this is actually not that surprising uh, in the sense that they um, that they do have those external responsibilities that I already uh, talked about, uh, but nearly three and four adult learners uh, enroll part time. This is definitely an inverse relationship to traditional students. Um, and when you break down that part time with that previous associates degree that I mentioned, a plurality are part time uh, seeking and associates. You can see here that plurality is roughly 47.5% are located in that part time associates category, whereas compared to traditional students, 68.5% uh, choose a bachelor and a full time course load. So inverse relationship in full time part time. Uh, and a different a choice of different degrees between adult learners and traditional students. Uh, here's what here's actually where I wanted to mention that adult learners choose to attend differently. Also, uh, not only where they attend uh, the, the type of degrees that they choose, but how they attend. Adult learners have long, long been pioneers in online only education. Uh, we can see here at in the bottom left corner that uh, Roughly 10 years ago, only 18.9% uh, uh, of adult learners uh, attended online only. But when you flip to the current year, the current year, 40.1% of adult learners attend online. And this is not just um, unique to adult learners, but it is worth noting that adult learners for greater than 10 years have, have chosen online education. But as I mentioned, this is not just exclusive to adult uh, adult learners. Uh, adult uh, COVID-19 really accelerated a trend that was already happening. When you break down uh, delivery, delivery method for both adult learners and traditional students, you can see here that that online column has steadily increased um, over the last, last 10 years. Now, adult learners are more likely to engage in online, but it is worth noting that traditional students have also gravitated towards online education and in-person in -person attendance attendance for both groups has gone down over the last um, 10 years. COVID-19 only accelerated, as I said already, that trend uh, towards online coursework. Now, online coursework is especially um, important for adults uh, because, of, as I mentioned, they're embedded in those communities. They have those external um, responsibilities and it makes institutions very accessible no matter where you may be. And the final uh, piece of an adult learner academic profile that I wanted to mention is, is simply financial aid. Adult learners are more likely to be financial independent, responsible for all those associated expend, uh, expenses. So it is worth noting that adult learners are 11.6 percentage points less likely to receive uh, financial aid. And this is a five-year five calculation, but it is still um, very concerning and is a call for uh, more types of financial aid to be available to adult learners. Now, not that you know financial aid is not is not available to adult learners. It is worth noting um, that they are 10 percentage points more likely to receive the Pell Grant, um, which is a, a, a signal of, of income, but it's also a signal that adult learners do file FAFSAs and do apply for financial aid. So um, allowing more financial aid to be available for adult learners is definitely a win win. All right, now moving on. Um, oh, I, uh, sorry, now moving on um, to our demographic uh, breakdown. Um, there are some very interesting findings uh, within the adult learner demographic breakdown. Um, adult learners uh, widen some equity gaps uh, while closing others. And I'm going to speaking specifically here of gender and race. Uh, the they widen some of the equity gaps uh, around gender, but they uh, close some gen gen uh, close some equity gaps surrounding race. Uh, it is worth noting also, and this is uh, very well tracked, that a adult learner demographics have a correlation with unemployment rates. Um, when adult learners are subject to higher unemployment rates, we do typically see adult learner enrollments increase um, at higher education institutions, and um, this tracked throughout the pandemic as well, um, where unemployment rates for certain populations did increase enrollments as well. 
Uh, also, in terms of demographics, uh, adult learners have a unique characteristic, and that is parental status. Uh, only 3% of traditional students are, are parents. However, one in three adult learners is parental status. So we're going to talk about that in terms of student services as well as their academic performance. Um, and finally, adult learners are more likely to be from Indiana, and we'll see that when we break down the residency of adult learners. So first, as I mentioned, they expand some some equity gaps, uh, and that is uh, particularly true with gender. Across higher education, there's a gap in college going and college completion rate between men and women, and this is only expanded when we look at adult learners. These significant gaps widen with age. We can see here um, that there is a 16 percentage point gap for adults, uh, and the, that's indicated by the, the steepness of the red line where we see 58.2% um, of adult learners are females compared to only 41.8% male. This is a, I should also mention this is a statistically significant uh, proportional difference of proportions as well. Um, so that is worth noting, but the real point is that the white, the gender gap only widens with age. The least likely to both attend and complete college um, are those older males. Uh, this, this gender gap for traditional students is only 7%, whereas when we move upwards towards 50 or older, uh, we can see the gender gap is nearly 30, 30 percentage percentage points. So something to consider about to consider uh, when we consider older, older male adult learners and how to um, uh, get them into higher education, uh, earning those credentials as well as completing uh, completing their credentials. Now, one incur oh, sorry, I apologize. Uh, one more slide here just to um, further emphasize that older males uh, are the least likely to to complete. We can see the percent uh, persistence percentages uh, for male and female broken down uh, by age gap with um, older males. One of one of the lowest uh, persistence rates as well as completion rates overall, yet one of the highest um, stopout rates. Right. Finally, uh, with race, however, race is one um, area in which we see the equity gap uh, actually close a little bit. And this is particularly true for black uh, students. A higher proportion of adult learners are black uh, than non-traditional students. And you can see that that's about eight percentage points higher. Now this concurs uh, when we calculate student age. Uh, when we take the median age of particular demographics, we can see that undergraduate black students are about five years older than white students at the median. Um, so this is something to ponder over about black students, perhaps um, delaying entering higher education, but it is interesting to note that adult learners are more likely to be black. And among adult, um, minority adult learners, 60.3% are black. Whereas other, other minority groups, uh, particularly Asian and Latinx students, they do tend to skew younger in median age. Apologize. All right, there we go. And finally, I wanted to move on uh, and discuss parental status because this is a unique one um, to adult learners and definitely one that we need we need to recognize. One in three adult learners um, is a parent, and that is compared to 3% of those aged uh, 18 to 24. And when we break down those age groups a little bit further, we see particularly those between 35 and 49 are the most likely to have children, 44% of them. So that's something to consider when adult learners enter our campus and the types of student services um, that, they, that they may need. Now, I, I do want to note that this uh, does come from, from the FAFSA questions 47 and 48, so we do have a high proportion of, of status unknown, um, but it is telling that just alpha based off those FAFSA questions alone, we were able to to estimate that roughly 33% of adult students, um, again, possibly even more, uh, are parents. Now, unfortunately, uh, it is true that those external responsibilities uh, do bear on the likelihood of completion. So academic performance for parent students um, definitely lags behind those of non-parents. On time and extended completion rates fall well short. Only 12.2% of parent students um, complete on time, um, and only four in 10 even complete within um, six years. So they're more likely um, 
they're they're more likely to, to stop out as we as we showed, um, but they're also then they're therefore less likely uh, to complete. And it is a, a stark contrast between non parents and parents. And uh, finally, the one very, very important demographic that reemphasizes that adult learners are embedded within our communities is simply that 85% of Indiana adult learners are Hoosiers. They come from our local communities. They have established career and family lives. And uh, this, this proportion of adult learners that is from Indiana is a significantly is statistically significantly greater than traditional students. So when we think about it, the adult learners and we prioritize uh, student services, we prioritize financial aid, we prioritize higher education policies. Those policies that prioritize adult learners are really uh, policies that help our fellow Hoosiers and help our fellow neighbors. Um, so uh, once again, reemphasizing that adult learners are from Indiana. Now I wanted to wrap up uh, with just a few uh, key takeaways. First is um, once again, just those historic enrollment trends that adult learners have declined in headcount. That is very concerning and something that we're focused on here at the commission. Most attend part time at a two year campus. We understand that that is uh, the bread and butter of an adult learner. Health and trades are very popular fields. They are fields which build credentials quite easily uh, and offer a shorter time commitment. It is also worth noting that adult learners are more likely to attend online. Greater than 60% take at least one online course. 40% attend fully online. And this is probably not a trend that's going to go away. COVID-19 only accelerated that online trend for both adult and traditional students. Adult learners are also less likely to receive other forms of financial aid except the Pell Grant. So making financial aid available to adult learners, knowing that they apply, they fill out their FAFSAs, is very important to expanding the percentage of adult learners that receive financial aid. When we looked at demographics, we saw that the gender gap is even wider uh, for older groups, so it's wider for adult students, but then when you break down by age, uh, it, it's, it widens quite a bit to 30 percentage points. And black students may de delay entering higher education. Their median age is about five years higher than a white student, and 60% of adult minor uh, of adult uh, minority students are black. And finally, adult learners, though they have established those careers and families in Indiana communities, uh, parent-student completion rates lag behind non-parents, but policies that help adult students help fellow Hoosiers. So just uh, real quick, uh, just so you can see it side by side, a larger proportion of adult learners um, are female, black, held their trades, they're Hoosiers, they are online learners, they are parents, and they are most likely to attend part-time or a regional campus. So I hope today's presentation uh, has put into your mind what an adult learner looks like, who they are, how they interact with our higher education institutions, and um, hopefully you can uh, take that with you as you uh, complete your own work and, and think about today's findings. Um, I'll take any questions or comments if, if we have any. Oh, I see. I see one from Armani Winters. Um, oh, yeah, uh, if you do have questions, sorry, I apologize. We need to uh, we have to enter them into the chat. Um, mic and cameras are disabled, I believe. OK, uh, the question is uh, about the uh, data collection um, here at CHE. We uh, take our uh, data system it's called CHEDS, uh, CHE Data Submission System. Uh, it collects data from our institutional partners who submit uh, their academic files, uh, student profile files as well um, every every fall. So 
sorry, I should say within sheds also a age is age is marked. Um, so we sorted out a dollar based on their their age, date of birth, whatever. Uh, question about uh, does the data include for profit or proprietary institutions? Uh, no, it does not. This is only Indiana public institutions. Uh, we certainly understand that adult learners may opt to choose a private institution um, or a proprietary school. Um, however, we do not uh, collect that data at a, at a high level. Uh, next question would be, does the data include individuals who are pursuing micro credentials or other certificates? Um, so we do have uh, some, we have certificate levels uh, that are, le are up to one year. So any certificate program that is up, up to one year would be within this. Uh, micro credentials, I don't believe we have. Uh, certificate. Oh, those are okay. Apologies. Thank you for the clarification. Yes, industry. Okay. Uh, so any indus industry recognized um, certification. Does not include advanced degrees. It's only uh, undergraduate um, level. Uh, so since we're particularly interested at students um, entering into those associates and bachelor's um, degrees, uh, it's been on my plate. I do have an idea written down for a graduate student uh, report, but in terms of adult learners, we're looking specifically at undergraduates. Thank you. These are, these are excellent questions. Um, about the data itself. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Caitlin Beck, uh, for the question uh, about any further insights or further gaps you've seen in addressing the needs of adult learners. I would like to uh, plug Stacy Townsley's breakout session uh, that is upcoming next. She is going to discuss more about the policies uh, and strategies surrounding adult learners. I just wanted to uh, set the stage with uh, just a data overview of what an adult learner in Indiana uh, looks like and how they perform. In, in our higher education institutions. Uh, the next question would be, does the commission look at resources and support for college student parents? Uh, OK, I, um, I'm going to once again plug Stacy's uh, breakout session. She may have a little bit more on that uh, for you in terms of policy. For private, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll keep that in mind. I'll keep uh, Lindsay. I'll keep your comment in mind about adult learner graduate students. Um, I will uh, definitely. It's definitely on my plate to do. I'm very excited about the data surrounding that. Thank you, Stacy, for the comment. All right. Well, thank you guys. Uh, for attending this uh, breakout session. If you have any comments, um, please let me know or questions, drop them in the chat. I'm gonna also drop drop my email into the chat. If you have any questions surrounding data or data analytics, um, I am part of the business intelligence uh, team here at CHE. We have a, a great team capable of putting together any numbers or reports uh, that you are interested in. We definitely will always take um, ideas or further questions surrounding this data. Cassandra? All right, well, thank you everyone. Um, as Lee mentioned, if you have any questions after um, this session, please feel free to email him. Um, we will break for lunch early um, and our afternoon sessions will begin about 1225 um, p.m. So please try to return to the afternoon sessions around 1220 p.m. So uh, that's it. Thank you all for joining today.